On the battlefield, there are few things as terrifying as a machine gun firing away. What's even more terrifying is how big some of them can be. Two of the biggest machine gun rounds still in common use around the world today are the 50 caliber BMG and the 20mm round. These two rounds have been used for decades due to their immense power yet versatility and ease of use in the number of weapon systems they can be employed against. But how exactly do they compare? After all, they're both billed as long-range anti-personnel, armor, and anti-pretty much anything you can think of. In deciding which one causes the most damage, there are two main categories to consider. The first one includes its intended targets such as personnel, tanks, aircraft, armored vehicles, and ships. The next category is ballistics characteristics like velocity, flight path, and power. Both the 50 caliber BMG round and the 20mm cartridge for autocannons have a similar history. John Browning designed the first 50 cal machine gun during the First World War. The US Army was inspired by French and German anti-tank and anti-aircraft rounds and wanted something similar. While the machine gun to fire the 50 caliber round had its first prototype by him around 1900, he redesigned it in 1917 to make the very first M2 machine gun or Ma Deuce as it's affectionately known by troops. The 20mm cartridge first came into existence as the Ehrlichon autocannon. The origins for the caliber actually came from Germany at the end of the First World War for its use as an anti-aircraft weapon, but Germany lost the war and as a result of the Treaty of Versailles was forced to give up most of their heavy weapons industry, including anti-aircraft weapons. Realizing the now futile venture the inventors found themselves in and wanting to make a quick buck, they sold the rights to a Swiss company named Erlikon. Erlikon developed the world's first 20mm autocannon that was quickly adopted by countries around the world. The US, Britain, Germany, Japan, Poland, Finland, and others used the Erlikon autocannons themselves or locally made derivatives of it. Both the 50 cal and the 20mm autocannon are devastating to personnel. Contrary to the popular myth that these weapons are only designed for use against hard targets like bunkers and tanks, they are both excellent anti-personnel weapons. While it might seem like overkill, there are no rules explicitly banning their use against personnel in the law of armed conflict for most nations. If you were unlucky enough to be on the receiving end of one of these rounds, there's not much you can do about it even with body armor. The strongest body armor on the planet today is known as level 4 armor. There are four levels of body armor with each level giving increased protection. The highest protection level plates can stop up to a 30-06 round, which produces about 2,500 foot-pounds of energy. Compare that to the average 15,000 foot-pounds produced by the 50 cal and the 38,000 foot-pounds made by the 20mm round and it's easy to see why no one hit by either of these powerful cartridges stands a chance of survival. How the weapons perform against tanks is a different story. There are many types of 50 caliber ammunition types and the most powerful one of those is the 50 caliber Sabode Light Armor Penetrator. The slap round was designed in the 1980s by the US Army and Marine Corps to punch through the armor of armored personnel carriers and light tanks. It works by using Sabo technology of pushing a small steel rod through the armor that allows the energy of the bullet to pass through it. These rounds are capable of penetrating up to 19 millimeters of armor out to a 1500 meter range. Such capability is impressive for light armored vehicles and mounted machine guns, but not so much for tanks. The most capable main battle tank in the world today is undoubtedly the US M1A1 Abrams. This tank's advanced armor offers up to 700 mm of protection for standard high explosive rounds and up to 350 mm of protection for Sabo type ammunition. Even other less capable tanks like the T-72 offer 450 mm of protection and about half that for Sabo rounds. The 20 mm autocannon fares equally as bad against tanks and performs worse against lightly armored vehicles. The 20 mm round can penetrate up to 6.3 mm of armor at the same 1500 meter range as the 50 caliber slap rounds. They perform better at shorter distances with up to 12.5 mm of penetration out to 500 meters before it starts declining. For a reference point, some of the most common armored vehicles around the world include the BTR-70 and BMP. Both Soviet designed vehicles that inspire many locally produced versions, each has 7 mm and 23 mm of armor respectively. A ZSU anti-aircraft gun, again a commonly used and exported Soviet design used for anti-aircraft and anti-armor purposes, has 9mm of armor. Now, the US Navy does use a similar Sabo technology in its close-in weapon system that fires 20mm rounds as a last resort against missile threats, but this makes up only a limited amount of the ammunition. Why the 50 caliber round performs better against armored targets than the 20mm round is simple physics. 
Though the 20mm produces more foot-pounds of energy, this energy is dispersed over a wider surface area. The 50 caliber slap rounds produce less overall energy but have a much smaller surface area, making this energy more concentrated that punches through armor easier. Now, of course, the 50 caliber slap rounds are not as common as the 50 caliber BMG ammunition, but this comparison includes all types of ammunition that can be shot from one of these weapon systems, since they're all the same caliber. Besides armor, both rounds perform equally well against aircraft. After all, this is what they were designed to do. Aircraft as a general rule do not have as much armor as ground targets, since their main defense against ground fire is their speed and maneuverability. Adding extra armor increases the weight and cuts down these critical factors, actually making it more dangerous for the pilots. For use against ships, the advantage has to go to the 20mm round. When one says ships, that does not mean you could take down a battleship or even a modern destroyer. Rather, use against small surface contacts like powerboats and speedboats, such as what pirates and terrorists use, is the intended target. The 20mm round wins here because of its range. The max effective range of a 50 caliber BMG is about 2,000 meters. The 20mm round is almost double that. In a maritime environment, distance is your friend since it gives you more time to assess the situation and more opportunity to strike the enemy. Though both weapon systems are employed by naval forces around the world, including the US Navy, the 20mm round is the go-to for these kinds of targets. As far as the kind of damage the 50 caliber round and 20mm round can inflict, they're equally devastating rounds. Against personnel targets, they both slice through with ease. The edge for armored vehicles has to go to the 50 cal, only because one of the variants specifically designed for it can punch through most armored vehicles in the world. The 20mm still packs a wallop in this case, but just not enough to beat the slap rounds. Against hardened targets like tanks, they both lose out just because tank armor has advanced so much over the past 50 years that a manned portable anti-tank rifle round is not truly feasible anymore. They both perform well against aircraft, and against small surface vessels the 20mm round wins due to its ability to deliver effective energy over a longer distance.